Buenos dias and welcome back to another video everybody. Thank you for visiting my channel. Today on the channel we are talking about this AGFA PD-16 medium format ready set camera. That is a mouthful my friends. A few weekends ago I went out and shot this bad boy and it didn't go so well. But one of the main things that did not go well was this. I was shooting 120 film. This camera actually takes 120 film. However, ow! However, the compartment that houses the film, it's about 100 years old. So the spools back in the day that it actually accepted were these little like almost 70 millimeter spools, I think they were, and they fit nicely into this little mechanism here. It's, it's spinning and yeah, you, you can see that, you can see that. The point being, I'm gonna show, I'm gonna show you this, I'm gonna show you this right now. This 120 film, it's not 70 millimeters in width. If you look, there is a discrepancy in height. That's what they always used to say to me out on the basketball court, but I showed them, you know, left, right. Okay, I digress. So that was a problem out in the field and I struggled and I knew when I loaded the film there was a problem but I ignored it because I wanted to shoot this camera for the very first time. And it didn't go so well, my friends. It didn't go so well. So I decided to flex my muscles and fix this thing. I had a few choices. Find some 116 or 616 film stock that would fit this thing. Probably a good chance it's all expired because the 116 was made back in the 1890s and then came along the 616 format film which came around the 1920s or somewhere in there. And then in 1984, Kodak said, no more to 116, no more to 616 format film. So that was done. So whatever's on the shelves, maybe still around, I wouldn't trust it, right? So I had two options. That's four. Two options. One, I could find another one of these spools and wrap this or load this film onto this and roll it all the way on. But that would require me to have another one of these spools so I could roll it back onto one of these 70 millimeter spools to put it back in the camera. Hopefully that made sense. That sounds like a lot of trouble. So what I decided to do to see if there was any spacers for sale online, and there's tons of them. So you can actually purchase spacers. They cost about $8. I'm gonna tell you a little secret. This whole medium format camera film loading problems, I, I, I think it's a little bit cursed because I did buy some spacers. They were actually delivered this past week. I took them and I placed them on my desk in my studio and I cannot find the bag. I don't, what kind of witchery is going on? I know it's almost Halloween, but come on. Couldn't find them. So I decided at work that we do have a 3D printer and I decided to look up and see if there was an STL file for the spacers that would fit on the ends of this 120 film. And I found it. I got it. I loaded it up. I printed them for beauties. The only problem was that the disc end was much too wide a diameter by about a millimeter or so, or a centimeter, or you know, just a smidge. So what I ended up doing, and I only had to do this once, took the spool that I had from the actual camera, laid it over the top of the spool, and traced an outline of the material I actually needed to discard. I did it for all four of these little spacers, and then I proceeded to cut it with tin snips. Now, I think some heavy duty scissors would be fine. And then what I did, with my wife's permission, I got one of her nail files and I filed these down, mostly just to give it a nice soft edge, not really to sand it down all the way and get a nice fine sand. It wasn't really for that. However, you could use some 120 sandpaper, some 220 sandpaper and just sand it down. That would work just fine. The idea was that when you place it back onto the 120 spool, you can see that my cuts aren't perfectly round, but they don't need to. As long as they sit inside of the base plate there then you should be just fine yeah and I've already tested it inside the camera and it seems to move and roll just fine so I am ready to go so that's it that's how you hack one of these 120 film formats and actually are able to put it in this specific camera the PD 16 
Agfa Ready Set Camera. However, your 120 film might fit nicely already, so you don't have to worry about it. If you're trying to go from 120 format to 116 or 616 format, this is going to do the trick. I printed four on purpose, and this is the reason. Once I put this guy on here and this guy on here, right? I'm actually gonna load the film onto this spool here or roll it onto this spool here. What's gonna end up happening is this is gonna be the finished spool and I'm gonna ship this off to get developed. So this is going to be bye-bye. And then I'm gonna be left with an empty spool, which is this one, but I'll have my spacers. I'll always have my spacers. I can have that as the new take-up spool and then I'll have a, another 120 to keep doing the darn thing. That's right, that's why I printed four of these guys. From spool to spool, 120 to 120, I'm gonna be just fine and just happy, specifically for this camera. But if it's not something you need to do, then don't worry about it. I really appreciate you watching and hanging with me on my photography journey, both in film and digital. And I have some really cool film projects that I'm really excited about. And so I'm keeping myself busy. I love you guys. Please subscribe if you're not subscribed. Please comment down below. I'd love to chat with you. Give me a like if you liked any part of this video. I think that's gonna do it. I'll see you next time. Peace. Went back to a video. Come on, man. I mean, if this was video number two or three, maybe, maybe. Get it together, Pablo. One, two, one, two, three. <laughs> oh, this little pretty camera. Scratch the head. That's for good luck. I really appreciate you. I really appreciate. Uh, I, I, I really. I, I mean, I do appreciate you, but why can't I say the words? <laughs>